वन थ्री टू नाइन सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान मैम आई एम सलोनी गर्ग फ्रॉम जगन्नाथ यूनिवर्सिटी आई एम थर्ड ईयर स्टूडेंट एंड आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क वट काइंड ऑफ मटीरियल्स वी कैन यूज एंड ऑन वट बेसिस श्योर प्रोफेसर जितेन्द्र प्रजापति विल आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन सी योर मटीरियल्स डिपेंड ऑन द क्लाइमेट दैट यू आर दैट यू आर डिजाइनिंग योर बिल्डिंग इन ओके Uh, what we found uh, during uh, one of our projects at iit was uh, the same material uh, uh, may may be very good in one climate but in another climate it may not work as efficiently okay also it depends on the type of building that you are doing suppose it's an air conditioned building then uh, 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 insulation or a material having better insulation will work but the same material if it were uh, used in a non air con conditioned building then it will not work that well okay another build, uh, building material will work better in that uh, case hmm? so depending on the type of building depending on the type of climate one has to choose their materials have you understood so like for hot and dry climate what kind of materials hot and dry climate you will look at uh, materials which are not yes. too thin you know which will transmit the heat uh, very quickly into the uh, room isn't it so you are looking at uh, at least uh, a brick wall of about 9 uh, inches or uh, concrete of about 6 inches huh uh, you have some material in mind which you need to discuss or you need to ask or this is just a general question mm. uh, can i add something to yeah, this yeah yeah so um, as you saw in professor nayak's lecture uh, regarding the time lag aspect so in a hot and dry climate what you would want is that the heat of the uh, afternoon sun is not transmitted um, inside the spaces in the day time but because in hot and dry climate it gets colder in the night you would want that heat a little bit in the night time so the material property of time lag will help in doing this where there is a, a difference in the temperatures of the day time and the night time so if you uh, think about a lot of these buildings the historic buildings that are made of sandstone uh, where you if you go inside the buildings you feel very cool even in the afternoon times so those kinds of materials uh, would be helpful in the hot and dry climate professor nayak you want to add some uh, hello have you seen the traditional architecture in rajasthan they use thick walls stone walls that's precise the reason uh, why they use stone stone thick walls and my colleagues have answered <coughs> the logic of using stone thick walls one more question uh, how to develop microclimate if the space is restricted there is no general solution it's a case to case basis you have to see what best can be done under a given set of conditions microclimate is really uh, you have to understand the context if there are buildings around you then how the uh, wind flow happens if there are trees around you where are the uh, where the shade of those trees fall and based on that you have to sort of locate your uh, windows locate your buildings and how the sun is falling on the site so it really depends on the context if it is a smaller site which is surrounded by buildings you have to cons uh, consider the shade and shadow analysis so in those regards if you adopt the context and use some of the energy modeling tools that uh, professor prajapati and nayak talked about that will help you to uh, consider various design options i just want to add um, you can uh, modify the microclimate using vegetation appropriately using water 
around the building appropriately. Uh, Hello. One one seven five Truba College. Please go ahead with your question. I want to ask that uh, gypsum we are using in the interior walls in Bombay and Delhi. Uh, so it is a part of. Is it a part in green buildings? Uh, see, you have to understand the again. One has to understand the context. Okay, uh, gypsum is easy to use, isn't it? And that's why people are using it uh, nowadays. Uh, uh, earlier, people used to do what instead of gypsum? They used to do plaster, isn't it? Cement uh, mortar, and on, on top of that, they would use uh, lime, chuna, you know, niru plastered. It was called. So now, nowadays, people are not available who do a good job in that material. So, uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know getting good quality, people have switched over to gypsum plaster. Okay. In terms of green uh, building, we have not analyzed it in that uh, manner yet. Monica, do you know whether gypsum plaster is a green material? If there is like recycled mm. content that is used in making the gypsum plaster, then it could be considered uh, green. But again, this is a relative term where you will have to consider what all options are available for those interior uh, uh, walls and then choose the material that has uh, sort of the least embodied energy and the best durability and also the material properties that Professor Nayak talked about in terms of the specific heat and uh, insulation properties and things like that. So, you, there are multiple variables that you will have to consider to call that material green. So, it is not a straightforward answer. Professor just, Anand Achari yeah. uh, would like to add something to this. I will just uh, add uh, to your question uh, regarding gypsum. Gypsum, there are two types of gypsums which is available. There is a natural gypsum which is a stone quarry from uh, remote from a stone quarry and gypsum is also uh, procured from a waste product from a uh, urea chemical fertilizers factory. So, uh, today what is gypsum available, you need to see where is that gypsum being used in the product. So suppose if you are using in a Rajasthan, there would be a gypsum which might be procured from a natural quarry or if it is suppose in South India, the probably there is no gypsum quarry which is available, it is a phosphate, calcium phosphate as a product which is there. So there are many companies which is urea companies which are coming up like in Bombay we have RCF factory. Uh, Rastriya chemical fertilizers, where the uh, gypsum becomes a byproduct and as a waste product for them. If probably there there is companies like which are using this product for developing their uh, ready-made uh, blocks or ready-made slabs or even for uh, plastering, probably yes. Then you would be as Monica Professor Monica Jain said, if it has a recycled content. So probably this is hundred percent post-industrial waste rather than becoming a purely natural uh, available material, which is a resource intensive. So probably that would answer your question about uh, how gypsum can be diverted towards rather than from using natural to recycled waste. Um, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you sir. Sorry. 1241 NRI Institute. I have a question on uh, uh, using the ash bricks over whole brick. Uh, is it really advantageous to move from uh, uh, whole bricks or chimney bricks to ash bricks in terms of uh, reduction of heat, absorbability of the water and plaster stickiness and does there, is there any real cost advantage apart from the environmental advantage? So this is a, re a, a larger question so I need a, de a detailed answer. I, I don't think I have the expertise uh, to okay. answer that question. Uh, maybe I can answer it from an architect's perspective. Huh? Uh, we've looked at fly ash blocks, we've, uh, we've looked at bricks also, we've worked in those materials. Uh, bricks are of very poor quality now available, at least in Mumbai. Okay? They are not dimensional, uh, they crumble easily, the quality of bricks is really bad. In comparison to that, we found that uh, fly ash bricks are uh, more dimensionally stable. Okay, uh, they are of better quality 
and uh, what happens is that if you have a better quality product they are also bigger in size okay so what happened was that we used less labor we required less material to plaster the wall okay in uh, in uh, fly ash bricks uh, they are so uh, nice they are they are factory finished products na so you don't uh, probably require plaster also you can directly paint also after giving a putty outside you need to plaster so then uh, in that sense it becomes a green product you know you are saving on material you are saving on uh, on uh, labor it becomes cost effective and also it gives you a good finish you know uh, your plaster thickness can be of uniform thickness in bricks we found that somewhere the plaster used to go up to 1 and 1/2 inch thick somewhere it is half an inch thick okay and it's not the problem of the labor or the mason it was the uh, material itself was so bad uh, in uh, in the in bikangao uh, where we've used the bricks you know we've used unplastered bricks they are uh, 8 inch by 4 inch by 4 inch they are also really bad quality but we had to accept what is available and we've used it okay <laughs> we were we actually wanted to do a red trap bond wall but uh, we were not able to do because of the dimension of the brick hmm? uh but uh, uh, coming back to water uh, of course if you don't plaster your material then you are saving a lot of water isn't it uh, any other qu uh, question regarding that the heat reduction is there a real ah, heat reduction at heat reduction yes yes i forgot that they are almost the same almost the same uh, hmm? so not much differentiates between the two products one question energy you reuse is being adopted extensively in private sector bigger structures but in the government sector it is not being extensively being adopted so if at all it is to be adopted which will save have the national economy which organization is taken care of uh if i have understood your question you want to say that energy efficiency in buildings not used in government. general is that the question in the government sector yeah the ministry who are responsible for this are uh ministry of new and renewable energy and uh, ministry of urban development and yeah. you can talk to bureau of energy efficiency and for materials it is bmtpc thank you 1296 good morning bro sir uh, yeah uh, sir what is the role of this fins uh, which is used as a vertical shading devices the role of fins uh they are used as shading devices that means they cut the sun's solar radiation from a particular direction depending on the wall where is it facing so what you saw was actually the east wall so uh you know that the sun is at a low angle and you cannot uh, use uh, chhajjas there you know horizontal uh, uh, but uh, shading devices are not as effective as vertical shading devices on that particular orientation okay it helps to cut the solar radiation okay thank you okay 1178 yeah so i'm kaushal desai final year student from uh, snp it uh, that's uh, umrak near surat so my question is uh, related to professor nayas ppt that uh, if we adapt a uh, new materials if we change our materials on basis of the simulation on basis of the data feeds like uh, specific heat and thermal conductivity can it be proven an economical aspect can it be economical to modify our needs on basis of simulations there are softwares who uh, provide you also uh, building uh, cost etc so one has to incorporate cost calculation along with the thermal calculations then you will get it okay uh, and uh, sir uh, we have seen an example of uh, cities like uh, mazdar built in abu dhabi uh, the whole city is planned with perspective of green architecture and sustainability issues so is can any such initiative be possible in indian scenario 
why don't you take the lead it can be in prin uh, in principle it can be done in principle it can be done somebody has to take the initiative to do that we have we have thank you very much sir yeah 1302 i am hasina from shivida college of engineering good morning is there any importance for the plan or shape of a building to be considered as a green building plan or shape of the building yes you can uh, there is a lot of importance in fact in that school which you saw uh, we all the longer sides of the building they face towards north and south okay the the main walls were facing towards north and south why because it is easier to shade those walls rather than the east and west huh? so you need uh, smaller chajjas the projections that come out from the uh, from the wall need to be smaller so the control is better thank you yeah 1192 material sir is concrete is a green material all materials are green all it's only uh, it's only the you know when you compare it to another uh, material you might get a better material so basically uh, if you consider even buildings na all buildings are sustainable but only some perform better than others okay so it's all a relative question uh, by itself uh, concrete is a green material okay but if you compare it to say uh, fly ash concrete block then co fly ash is better because it uses recycled content uh, it is lighter also so transportation is easy hello sir i have one more question Uh, as we know that uh, us united states have seven times more energy, con energy consumption than ours uh, uh, to maintain their good quality of life so how is it possible or how it is easy for us to have a sustainable energy use planning for a building where uh, in a country like india the basic need of shelter is difficult to fulfill okay uh, uh, you saw the school building na that we did in bikangao so what you can do is you can uh, like professor nayak said you can harness the forces of nature so that you don't uh, require or you require minimum auxiliary energy okay uh, in that school we do not use any fans and tube lights in the classrooms okay the comfort is mainly by ventilation and it's because of the passive solar design okay so it is on us as designers to design a building which will not require uh, energy isn't it or even resources we can manage our resources better so what we did was uh, because the requirement of energy was so less then we could afford to go in for uh, photovoltaic uh, solar for the offices part of it hmm? uh, let me just add a little more to it if you remember the uh human development index chart uh, us was way uh, above in terms of energy consumption uh, but it, if you look at hong kong which has a similar quality of life as the us but it has much lesser energy consumption per capita so there is a possibility of attaining a good quality of life by having lower consumption the point is to have comfortable living by providing temperature and environmental variables that are comfortable for human being by adopting passive means and reducing the uh, artificial uh, energy that we use 1228 oh good morning this is remy from loyola icam chennai yeah uh, my question is uh, whether can we regulate the internal side of the green building so that we can get the uh, same comfort that is available in a normal air conditioned room uh, do you mean that uh, can uh, uh, passive solar be as comfortable as air conditioned room is it is that your question no yeah that's what i mean no yeah. it can never be because here you are maintaining your uh, uh, in air conditioned uh, uh, buildings you are maintaining at a constant temperature within a very narrow range isn't it in passive it uh, depends on the external uh, climatic conditions so the range varies and people have to start adapting also their lifestyle to the uh, 
climate and the design. Okay, so people become more, more active in passive uh, design buildings. I want to add one thing here. You know, you have artificial source of energy. You are controlling. The control is much efficient in air conditioned building. But that doesn't mean that uh, passive buildings are totally uncontrolled. A fair degree of control can be made by appropriately designing the building. So, you should not have the impression that passive buildings are totally uncontrolled. But yes, the degree of control that one gets in an air-conditioned building will not be available in a passive building. One has to find out whether that control is required at all for a given requirement. If it is required, then you have to probably go to air conditioned building. And uh, just adding one more thing that there are technologies available that can actually be a combination of passive architecture and Im incorporate some, some controls, uh, so like the heat recovery system and things like that. So there are technologies available that can be a combination of both. I got another question. And does the location is a real, does the location of the building is a real factor in green building technology? I think we have already answered that question. So, uh, can we move on to the next center? It's the context specific architecture we have talked about, I think, multiple times. 1071. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, I want to ask that uh, while doing the thermal analysis in uh, desert areas, how will you consider the climate change? Because it is uh, dry and hot, uh, like in, it is hot in uh, days and cold in nights. So how will you do exactly? What type of materials you use? Uh, uh, send your questions on chat also. And uh, I think this question has been answered partially initially, but Professor Nayak will take it up. The, Arid climates have such a, a huge variation in diurnal temperature. What you said, daytimes are pretty hot, nights are pretty cool. So one has to add, uh, use this benefit, I mean, use this facility for the benefit of the building. That means during night time, allow the ambient air to come in, store that coolness in your building facades, use that coolness for that time comfort. So there are designs which are possible, create induced ventilation in the night, use materials which have low emissivity so that store the coolness in the building. Okay. Uh, I would uh, advise you to locate some references which my colleague Jitin showed in his presentation, you will find answers to your question. 1256. Good morning. How can the re rainwater recycling can be done if a building is constructed in the middle of the city? See, uh, even in the city you have some trees and plantations. So you can use the grey water for irrigation. Okay, after a little bit of filtration. And uh, you could also uh, use the grey water uh, by a little bit of uh, uh, filtration in the flushing systems uh, uh, in the toilets. So there are ways where you can, and um, as I uh, yeah, and as I showed you that you can plant on your rooftops in an urban scenario, or you can have uh, uh, plants and vegetables in your yard. So you can use that water for irrigation purposes. Uh, in the uh, buildings as well, in city areas also. One, two, four, three. Uh, I have a doubt on that psychometric uh, concept of uh, what, what do we consider in that psychometric point of uh, the green building design? Psychometric analysis. It's a tool. Uh, and uh, what it is, it is a software. You can uh, download it and check it up. Okay. Uh, it does the analysis of the climate and it will also give you certain guidelines okay how to achieve more comfort okay using the psychrometric chart we don't prepare it it's an inbuilt thing in the tool okay so please download that software climate consultant 
there was a point called micro climatic and psychometric analysis so what would be the output of the psychometric analysis where it deals with you get certain uh, guidelines to do passive solar architecture okay it uh, helps you to define those uh, what can you do now uh, do you require evaporative cooling do you require shading do you require ventilation so it will list down the efficacy of each uh, technique that uh, can be applied uh, uh, psychrometric and microclimate they are different uh, altogether psychrometric chart is a chart of a chart showing air properties so you will have plot of temperature humidity ratio relative humidity etc in that chart you superimpose your comfort requirements you will get a set of design guidelines as opposed to that microclimatic analysis is different around your building what is that you can create an environment that benefits you by shading by admitting daylight or not admitting daylight these are or creating a water pond so that your humidity increases temperature decreases so these are micro climatic related studies thank you very much 1147 uh, sir my question to you is you have talked much about the new buildings but uh, what are the design considerations or else what are the considerations that are that will be given to the existing buildings sir because ours is a 30 years old organization so uh, how can we uh, convert our building into a green building okay you need to do the analysis first and then you'll get the answers for that okay so you you use the same approach that we had used and uh, you'll still get the same results okay so it's called retrofitting a building okay but the process is the same you first have to analyze the climate you have to analyze the uh, building requirements you have to analyze the function uh, and the building envelope and then you will get certain feedback from your analysis on what to do what is the status of recycling of materials in building and road sectors with reference to research and development and actual usage at site see this uh, question uh, will be better put to you know uh, an organization like uh, cbri central building research institute or uh, bmtpc building Ma materials uh, technology council okay they do a lot of research and then uh, maybe you'll get better uh, answers to these questions thank you 1260 Uh, i am professor yashwant pawar from singhad engineering college pandarpur my question is what is life of green building as compared to so called non green building located at same climatic condition it is the same durability is the first issue you look at in any building compared to so called non green building located at same climatic condition the life is the same you cannot say that you can design a green building and say that its life is going to be less than a conventional building that is not how it is to be uh, approached see because uh, durability safety all those concerns are also an issue in architectural design so you must look at those also sir hello uh you have shown one picture where yeah. plastering is not done yeah okay uh, but due to weathering effect is mm. it not possible that there there will be disintegration of that external exposure surface yes but we have uh, shaded the walls also and uh, this is uh, not in a place like uh, mumbai where there is lot of rainfall but in a dry climate so you need to you know you have to be aware where you are uh, doing your work and what type of materials you are using now the same type of unplastered wall if you were to use in kerala then uh, you are you aware of lorry baker's uh, buildings so he will have a huge uh, veranda in front of that wall so that it never gets wet 
Okay. So you have to save your wall. One two five seven. Hello. Good morning, sir. Uh, Doctor uh, J K Nayak has told that uh, we have some commercial uh, software available for the simulation purpose. Uh, sir, I want to know about the open source so, uh, softwares available for the simulation purpose of uh, thermal performance of the buildings. Yeah, there are many open source. So I will ask my colleague to give you a list of open source softwares. Open source means uh, you want to change the source code, or you just want uh, free software. Only free software, na? Basically, you want to use a free software. Yes. Ha. Huh. Then uh, Equest is very good, and it uses DOE as the uh, simulation engine. Uh, there is NLG Plus also, which is more advanced than uh, supposed to be more advanced than Equest. Uh, you can download both of this uh, from the internet. They are freely available. There is ESPR. From uh, Europe, that is also a very very uh, good software. All these software have been validated, okay, and you can use them. That means they are uh, uh, the technology has been actually tested. Huh? Radiance for daylighting. Uh, Ma'am, as you have said that under the green building evaluation systems, even a platinum certified building may have carbon emissions. For transport, that is in that site. Mm -hmm. Are you sure that they have not taken into account the any credit for the uh, fossil fuels? Because under the site efficiency, they have a credit for non-fossil fueling facility for the vehicles. So uh, this was just taken as an example uh, to illustrate the point that when you are thinking about green buildings, it should be considered in the context, in the larger context. So if you are locating your building where there is no public transportation and everyone is using petrol driven cars, then that reduces the effect of the greenness of that uh, entire environment. So definitely there is uh, the site. Uh, Selection is one of the criteria in these evaluation systems. So you have to go by all of these different criteria. My question is that, uh, so do you mean that uh, the platinum certified building is still not an ideal green building? Uh, I don't want to uh, point out uh, specifically like that, but I, this was a thought provoking comment where I would like all of you guys to consider that just not going by the evaluation systems, but considering the larger context. A platinum, there can be a platinum certified building in, uh, say, Mumbai or New York, <coughs> where uh, the building is accessible by public transportation, whereas it could be in Los Angeles kind of situation where you are driving your car. So those two, although they are the same platinum certified buildings, but they will have much different impact on the. Uh, greenhouse gas emissions and the environmental system. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yeah, I we have exhausted our 45 minutes, so we'll take more questions in the uh, next interactive sessions, and we'll continue with the lectures now.